tonight on Only in America. Hey, bus driver, there's no toilet paper back here. I'm hitting a one-of-a-kind American school with a curriculum that'll blow you away. Don't stand next to an open flame after you eat those. I explore the hidden underground world of the San Francisco cable car, amongst other things. And later, here's a pair of chaps. The secret lives of Oregon's lumberjack. I'm in the village, people. <laughs> Listen up, America. I'm Larry the Cable Guy, and I love this country. So I had this idea to find out all the things that make this country great. The people, the history, the way we do things. Only in America. What do our American high schools have in common other than teen pregnancy? Well, I'll tell you. America's a great country because we produce great leaders, like me. All right, bad example. But America is a great country because we do have great schools. And a lot of our good kids come out of these schools. So I'm in Bemidji, Minnesota, where they got a high school that not only has a lot in common with the rest of the country, but they have something that separates itself from anybody else. I'm gonna go check out what it is. And maybe while I'm at it, I can get one of the young'uns to explain neck tattoos and nose piercings. Here comes the school bus! Whether you are seven or 70, some things about American high schools never seem to change. The lunch lady, spitballs, and cheating off that smart kid in math class. Hey, bus driver, there's no toilet paper back here. Thomas Jefferson was the first to suggest creating a public school system. But it wasn't until 1918 that all states actually passed laws that made some sort of school a requirement. America's been educating minds ever since. Well, here we are at the school. I'm a little nervous. I ain't been in school in, geez, five years. <laughs> now, like most schools, Bemidji has morning PA announcements, but boy, it sure ain't like it was when I was a kid. Good morning, Bemidji High School. I'm Jade. And I'm Denzel Washington. Get her done! Thanks for joining us uh, for BHS this morning. Jade? Well, um... Oh, this is mine, Jade. Yep. Community Education is offering us an ACT prep class later this month. Boy, that's gonna be something. Mm -hmm. Stop by the Career Center for more information. Jade? Yeah, they do a really great job. Boy, Definitely they do. There's something else, them folks. And you know, the uh, ASVAB will be offered on Tuesday, November now, what 23rd. is the ASVAB? You know, I'm not really sure. Really? I believe it's a, a test. It will be offered November 23rd, so stop by the Career Center to pre-register. That's right. Mm -hmm. Project Lead the Way is a class that consists of fun, hands-on activities. The class will meet Thursdays after school. Now, if you're interested, please see Mr. Gooch in room 2155. I'll tell you what, I sure like that Gooch fella. He's a really good dude. He is a good dude. I'm all about the Gooch. You know, with hunting season in full swing, please be sure you follow school policy. Clean your vehicle before coming to school and leave weapons, ammunition, and knives of any style at home. You know, Jade, when I hunt, I like to wear all orange and hunt right on the side of the highway. That way, the critters think you're just a prisoner picking up trash. They're not scared of you. That's a great, great plan. I don't know if it's legal. Well, but... you bag a lot of them. <laughs> I bet you do, Larry. <laughs> Those are your headlines, though, this morning, VHS. Hey, what we're going to do is see you again tomorrow. Get her done! <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Boy, I tell you what, she's a good one. Now, a lot of folks will tell you their favorite subjects in school was history or English. Now, for me, it was lunch. Why? Because of another great American tradition, the lunch lady. Hey, what's hey. going on? Hi, Mike, what's going on? Well, yeah. hi. Thank you. Good We're kind of busy here cooking lunch. I mean, oh, Sam, why don't you um, scrub up and help us a little bit? Help us. I know about food. You do? <laughs> I'm gonna make. Do you some. know about washing? I'm gonna find you a nail brush, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna go right in the chemical. A nail stove. brush? Yes. Just hang on. What am I? You know, I didn't just come from a jungle or something. Here, here's a nail brush. All right. Well, okay. You just scrub, and while you're scrubbing... Oh, that's the thing, I've got to conserve water, but then you put your hands in there, you can't get the water out of it. I know! What happened to the days where you just turn the knob? Oh, well... It's a free country. You should be able to have water when you need water, not when it tells you you need water. There's aprons over there. We'll do the whole deal. 
Okay. Can you, you don't mind doing me, Dave? Telling me thing? No, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to. Look at this. Look, look. Look at this. Oh, see? I know it. It does that. That is the bureaucracy of the United States government right there. They put in this stupid thing because you ain't got no knobs, and now you're not even close to it, and it's still going off. Larry, I think we're going to work over here and do the ground beef for our tacos today. I'm a gra I love ground beef. Oh, I forgot. We got to put this on you. It's a hairnet. Just flip your cap right off, right there, and then Why we'll can't put I just this take on. It off? Because if you touch it, you have to rewash your hands. Are you serious? I'm really serious. Yes. Hold on. That good? Oh, good job. All right. Come on. Okay. Here's your gloves. And I'd like to introduce you to Josh, and he's gonna help you make taco meat today. Josh, how are you? <laughs> now you gotta change your gloves. Do we need to change? Wait, oh, man. you can't get anything cooked in here. America, do you know how school lunch program started? Well, a guy wrote a book in 1904 called Poverty that showed how poor kids weren't learning because they got to school hungry. Then we fed them tater tots, and a bunch of little Einsteins was born. Back in the day, yeah. you could have sneezed in your hand and fed chili to people. Boy, that just looks... <laughs> just... Has anybody got a gear shift they need grease? Boy, that's you know what Okay, I'm so doing. now we're stirring the paste. I need taco seasoning and pepper flakes. That's four cup. Smash the taco meat here. He knows. Now you gotta do this with that whole thing? That's right. What is it about kids and the lunch lady? All kids love the lunch lady. That's because we're awesome. Now, how do you feel about being a lunch lady? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like writing jokes over taco meat. <laughs> America, did you know that lunch used to be dinner and dinner used to be lunch? You see, they used to serve dinner midday, but factory workers had to eat it later because they worked longer hours. And did you know some people still call dinner supper? But that's a whole nother story. Either way, my favorite's breakfast. Okay, two bags in one pot. There you go. All right. Oh, wait a minute now. You might have to change gloves again, remember? But I didn't touch me my mouth. I went like that. Okay. I didn't touch my mouth. Now, why do you put gloves in there? <laughs> Why do you put gloves in them? Why? Because somebody dropped it in the beans. That's why. Well, you handed me a glove. Well, you were supposed to change your glove. I, I didn't touch anything but beans. How are those beans dry? I gotta say, they're good. Bemidji High School feeds nearly 1,500 students. That's more than 10% of the entire population of the city of Bemidji and they aim to keep these kids fit. That means high nutrition with good quality chow. All right, finally I get some help. Yeah, I'm gonna come up and help you. You're gonna do some beans for me today. I'm gonna do the beans? Yeah, you would These, these things ought to come with a roll of tissue with them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand next to an open flame after you eat those. On top? Okay. Look at that. You want some beans? Good choice. That's a really good right. Man, would you give them more meat? You're scraping on the meat. That's what I always say. It's like they used to do it in prison. Yeah, get it. You want some beans? What the hell with you then? Did you know during World War II, many young men were turned down for military service because of malnourishment? This led to the establishment of our national school lunch program in 1946. The, what, what meal do they like better than anything? Now it's the spicy chicken. You want beans? On top? Yeah. Boy, tell you what, that's how I like it. Hey, give her another plate, would you? I won't take me a lunch break. Bemidji has something unique about it, which I was soon to learn. But I love a school cafeteria, the main social hub for most American teenagers, and a place to teach proper social skills. I'm gonna fart like crazy. <laughs> Coming up.
It looks like something my grandma had removed from a colon. Bizarre high school sporting rituals. <laughs> then, the rules on drinking tea in Chinatown. Boy, it's hot. Shut up. Change that damn thing, girl. <laughs> and later... Hey, kill him my back. Trouble with Timber. Timber! Well, old Larry's got a belly full of taco meat and a hankering for history. It's time to mold some young minds. All right, everybody shut up. Class talk. <laughs> wow, that was pretty good. Right? <laughs> that was some authority. All right, your teacher's out sick. I don't know what it is. Herpes or something. <laughs> uh, I'm your substitute teacher. Anyway, I got to hurt. Now, you may be asking yourself what Professor Larry could really teach an advanced placement history class at one of America's finest high schools. <laughs> How much does everybody know about the Texas Revolution? Truth is, there's some really bright kids out there, and they do know about the Texas Revolution, but do they know about chewing gum? <laughs> How many survivors were in the Alamo? Two. There were two survivors in the Alamo. Now, what a lot of people don't know is Texas was part of Mexico, which is kind of odd from today, because now all the Mexicans are back in Texas. <laughs> so we spent an entire period discussing Texas's fight with Mexico, the Alamo, the only two surviving Texans, then a month later, Sam Houston struck down the Mexican army. Well, look, I don't have time for all the details, but our story's gonna pick up with what happened to Santa Ana, the former president of Mexico, years after he surrendered and acknowledged the Republic of Texas. Santa Ana's trying to make money, so he goes up to New York City. Now, he meets a feller up there, Thomas Adams, and what Santa Ana had, he's trying to sell a substitute for rubber. And Thomas Adams buys a ton of this dude Santa Ana's rubber. Well. It stunk. It wasn't good at all. But he found out you could chew it, and it lasted a long time. You could blow bubbles with it, and it was called chickle. And this guy invented chicklets. <laughs> chicklets and king gum. This dude was the father of chewing gum. So Santa Ana became the most important Mexican in American history because without knowing it, he made Texas a state. And he invented chewing gum. There you go. Yeah. See, I knew that IUD would come in handy. Or GED. All right, now let me ask you all a question. What makes Bemidji so much more special than any other place? Bemidji is actually the curling capital of the U.S. You guys actually have a curling team. No other high school has one, do they? You teach curling. Does any other high school teach curling? No. You're the only ones. Only in America. And that's what separates Bemidji High School from everybody else. Yep, Bemidji High is the rare American school that offers classes in curling. Can you believe that? Curling! The curling club has won over 50 national titles since 1952, and as we speak, a new generation is mastering the Winter Olympic oddity with brooms and 40-pound stones. Case in point, this Bemidji graduate. I'm Pete, Pete Fenson. Pete Fenson, Olympics 2006. Right on, pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. huh? hey, hold on. Bronze, is that right? Yeah, I'm impressed, all right, good job. Well, it was on late at night and I was up. Yeah, nothing else to do, right? <laughs> so, the, so Scotland, this is where it comes from. Yeah, right on. They started uh, playing on the frozen lakes and uh, they were just firing rocks up and down the frozen lakes and uh, kind of turned into what we have today. Yeah, Scotland. look at that. Looks like something I had my grandma had removed from a colon. <laughs> now, how do we, show me how we do this. All right, This is, good. I mean, this is interesting. Now, folks, it was colder than the well digger's boots in here, so I threw on some proper curling attire. Boy, I gotta tell you, my weenie's in any right now. It is freezing in here. And Pete was oh, kind enough to give me a few lessons. So I'm gonna put my right foot, in your case, your left foot, All right. in the hack. Now what you gotta do is slide the stone about 150 feet to the house. After each team throws eight stones, you see who's closer to the center, and that's pretty much it. Teammates can sweep the ice to further the stone and affect its speed and angle. Okay, so this sport basically involves uh, shuffleboard and housework, all at the same time. Now every curling stone comes from either one or two granite quarries off the coast of Scotland, where they've been doing this sport since the 1500s. So I just slide out like this. All right, enough talking. Time for some curling. Kick off. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Now, what's another way to do it? I'll show you. You throw this right out of the hack like a bowling ball. Oh, now, see, now that's a way to do it. <laughs> you. Look at this. I'm going to knock that one right off. But well, I down, and I'll show you. We'll throw those first back. First throw, and knock it off. Come on, let's get down here. We'll throw these back. All right, let's All throw right. them back. All right. High school ain't just a place to give geeks wedgies or a place to get a hall pass and meet up with a teacher. It's a lot more than that. It molds the minds of America's youth and it makes America one of the greatest countries in the world. And here at Bemidji High School, they're a good example of that. And they got curling. Who's up? Let's do it, boys. I know what you're thinking, San Francisco. What are you doing hanging out in San Francisco? Believe me, I kind of stick out like the pregnant prom date. But there's a lot of stuff that's unique to San Francisco. And some of it you can't discuss on basic cable. This great American city boomed after the gold rush, but its expansion had a huge obstacle. 43 mind-boggling hills that were killing horses and wearing out people. But being Americans, we found a solution that all runs out of this hub in the middle of town. Of course, I had to walk up the giant hill to see it. I'm looking for Norbert. Hey, you done found him. Norbert, how you, you must doing? must be Larry. I am Larry. Why San Francisco for the cable cars? As you may have noticed when you were huffing your way up those hills. I was to get huffing, here, yes I was. It's kind of steep. Cable car is the only vehicle designed to run on these hills. Okay. And nothing does it better. It's really an amazingly simple system. Long steel cables run underneath the track at a steady speed of nine and a half miles per hour. The cable car on the track just grips that cable and goes along for the ride. All right, Larry, this is cable machinery. Wow, look at that. This is what powers the entire operation. Now these are pulling all these cables out there. These are pulling all those cars all around the city. The cow rope is over four miles. the show. That's all I'm saying. It was a former miner named Andrew Holliday who got the bright idea to use wire ropes to pull cars up and down the hills of San Francisco. Holliday attracted only three major investors and put his entire life savings into the project. Guess what? Everybody thought Holiday's idea would never work, but on August 1st, 1873, the first cable car went up and down Clay Street. And you know what? It's been going ever since that day. Only in America! Tommy here's what they call a grip man. He's the guy with the tough job of running the cable car. It requires strength, stamina, and focus. This is called the grip that grabs onto the cable. This is called the track brake. Right. And you notice there's four pieces of wood, two right. in the front, two in the back, that help stop the car. OK, and that stops it. Well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now, these brakes are pretty much as basic as they can be. Four pieces of straight grain Douglas fir pressing down on the track until the car stops. Now, this is the stopper. This is the stopper. And you can't do it fast or you're going to jerk everybody. Or if you do it too hard, people fly forward, top of you, or you might get to where it slides. You've got to be able to feel the car. It's not about pushing this back making the car stop. Well, you can really feel that cable going by underneath. Now, before the cable car came, public transportation across the country was called an omnibus, which was a horse pulling a streetcar. But that wouldn't work in San Francisco because of all the big hills. It's the oldest system they have in the world. The oldest transportation system in the world. Still, that's still working. So, but it doesn't look like you really have time to be looking at stuff. I mean, you're constantly this, constantly that. Oh, yeah. Ringing the bell. Watch out the traffic. We control the lights. Okay. And they'll actually turn my side green and all the way around red. How yes. do you do that? Right on the floor, as we cross it right here, it activates the lights to let them know that I'm coming. Yeah! Well, look at you playing a little song on huh? 
That's right. We own the Cape Cod. We own the Cape Cod. Now, I think you can see why San Francisco even has a famous bell ringing contest that they've been having since 1949. Either that or an ear ringing contest, one of the two. You got any tips on anything else I can check out? We got Chinatown right down the street. Chinatown's right down there? Right down the street, two blocks. Coming up, testosterone time in big timber country. Timber! And later, I make a fortune. 90% of men who try camels still prefer women. <laughs>They started to make some fortune cookies. This is Annie. Yes. Annie. Annie is the master Annie. cookie maker. This is the owner right here. I call him the Chinese yeah. red fox. Oh, Looks out. just like from Sanford and Son, but different. Now, who comes up with the fortunes? Would that be you? And, uh, no. Fortune Tina. Oh, that clears it up. But the children said, make him my, my name. I am uh, number two, but no number one. Big cookie, no thumbnail. For me, everybody happy. Right. My I told you, is my, the red fox a My China? cookie is good. Annie, how many fortune cookies can you make in a day? 20,000. <coughs> 7,000 fortune cookies. 20. 20,000. Yeah. You just upped it from 7,000. I thought 7,000 was good. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll tell you the one thing, though, about working at the cooking factory. I mean, everybody's got a smile on their face. <laughs> Seems to be enjoying it. Somebody's got a good fortune, like something's good in your future. Are there bad ones? Are there like you're going to get a tumor or you're going to get hit by a car? Is there anything? bad in there. No, no. All the white paper is good fortune mm -hmm. for everybody. All white paper is good fortune. Good uh, for fun. Oh, this is just for fun. Okay. Fun. So Fu Ling Yu says 90% of men who try camels still prefer women. <laughs> Funny, huh? That's a good. Okay. That's okay. a good. I like it. Let's you try are, one. Let's try yeah, one more. Yeah. Fu Ling Yu says midget Always getting nose in other people's business. <laughs> That's a good one. I like the midget ones. Can I try to make one cookie? Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Is that okay? Put one. Like that, and, and then. And put it. And okay, I gotta do it fast, right? Yeah. Okay. Not cool yet. Okay, just like this. Great. Oh, no. Okay, I see what you're saying. Better. They're really hard to make. They're a lot harder to make than I thought they would. They're hard. Yeah. You know what you need to start doing? You need to start putting some get her duns in these fortune cookies. Yeah. We should make some get her done fortune cookies. Yeah, you see it? Are you way ahead of me on this? Yeah. Look at that, boys. <laughs> San Francisco's Chinatown is the oldest of all Chinatowns in America and was started during the gold rush and the railroad when a lot of Chinese immigrants came to work on it. Let's hope the Chinese reputation does not hold true when Chinatown gets recalled. Okay, I got my fortune cookies from the Chinese Fred Sanford. Now I'm going to find out about all the tea in Chinatown from the Chinese Don Rickles, a local legend called Uncle G. You like to sit down? How old it? You got some sweet tea? No, oh, no sweet tea here. Damn got, it. What do you think this place is? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this go, is, no, you, let me. You gotta cuss me out. Sit down. <laughs> I'm sitting. You don't, you don't drink tea. sweet tea. Shut huh? up. 
All right, Dan. All right. Uh, most important thing you have to understand, <laughs> we don't drink sweet tea here. When we drink tea here, we not drink it for pleasure. We drink everything for health wise. Oh, and well, I'm at the wrong spot. <laughs> Set. Look at me. How don't I look sexy and young? You do look sexy. You How damn old right. Are you? I'm 78. Get out of here, for real. Will you drink my tea, please? I will. Yes. Hey, that's good. Did you just do what you just, it's too hot to do that. Are you serious? You're just down in that? Touch. That's nice. And I could still, at my age, I could do like, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> so what you learn now, you will listen to your uncle, okay? You, you, uncle. You were that close to my forehead right, right. there. You almost knocked me. You down right. I can't get there for the punch. And I had to roll down the street now, OK? <laughs> How did Chinatown start? How did well, Chinatown okay. start in San Francisco? Back in 1874. So what happened? The Chinese arrived to this country. They are forced to live in this area. This area is called 14 square block. The city father said, this square area is that is what you have and that is where you stay you cannot go out any place until when after world war ii then the chinese would have free to move out so this is a sweet tea what does this do now what will this now, do now this is i've already got more energy from the last one don hatch boy it's hot shut up drink the damn thing Uncle, girl. honest to god it's gonna burn my freaking tongue look at this well that's because you drink it all the time Give him a cup, see if he downs it. If he does, then I'll down this. But I'm telling you, it's hot. Tell me that's not hot. Is it hot? Andy. Oh, you guys suck. Mm-hmm. I burnt my tongue. I burnt my freaking tongue. Did you know the tea bag was invented in America by mistake? A merchant named Thomas Sullivan used to send out samples of his tea in silk bags, and people used to take those samples and put them in hot water, and boom, teabagging was born. Now, this is nothing like teabagging in college. That's a whole different deal. See, if I eat bad at night and I wake up the next morning, I just feel rough. I got heartburn okay, okay, and I okay. feel kind of dizzy. Okay. That's something that's been okay, bugging me. Why not going to make a tea for you? For well, that, we drink the tea called Pura. What this is, is the tea if you do not eat enough vegetable. When you sit in the pate yes. and poop doesn't come out, yes. you will drink the damn tea I make for you. All right? Yes, I Shut will. Shut up. Drink the damn stuff. So I can sit down and eat meatloaf and potatoes and not eat my spinach or my carrots, and then I can drink this instead, and it'll be almost the same. And you'll be fat like a pig. Well, I got that part licked. See you later, Uncle. It was a Take nice care. time, man. I enjoyed it. You enjoy it. Take care. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much. And behave yourself. I'll do it. I'll do it. Wow, that's a tough tea salesman. And you can see it's guys like that that made Chinatown an institution. But you know, if you travel 400 miles north of here, you'll see some other guys that are tough as nails. And what they do, practically built this country. You know, when you think of the lumber business, you think about big strapping tough guys in flannel shirts and big muscular arms. Hey, I could be a lumberjack. No, I ain't got the muscular arms. But one time I did find a couple of wood ticks in my undershorts. I mean, that qualifies. But these folks still exist. You just gotta find them. They're not just in movies or on paper towels. And right now, I'm tracking some. There's lumberjack droppings all over the place. And these lumberjack droppings have led me all the way to Oregon to the Rough and Ready Lumber Company, where I'm gonna go watch these good, hard-working Americans build America. Now, the timber business is absolutely critical to this country. Logging for lumber and paper happened since the get-go. But the Homestead Act of 1862 supersized the settling of America and made wood a critical commodity. The Pacific Northwest became the place for quality timber in the early 20th century, and Oregon is still where you find a whole lot of tough guys doing this hard and dangerous work, like Dave here. I came up here to learn about the whole lumber business, and Oregon is known for that. Yes, sir. This timber that we're cutting here is second-growth timber. There was uh, 
an original harvest of trees uh, probably 50 to 70 years ago. You know, I grew up in the woods. I've been working in it since I was 15 years old. You know, my kid, these trees will be around. The next rotation of forest will be around when my kids grow And up. for every tree you cut down, you plant how many? About four more. Remember this, folks. Cutting down a big tree is the second most deadliest job in America, right behind deep sea fishing. Third is cleaning out the porta potties at a fish concert. Here's a pair of chaps so you don't cut yourself. All right. Now, do I keep my pants on? Or? Yes, sir. <laughs> look at this. I look like I'm in the village people. <laughs> it's the new character in the village people, the logger. Coming up. At the heart of America's lumber business, it's people that matter the most. So, Jimmy, what am I looking at here? My name's Hector. Well, what'd I call you? Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> and later. You gotta hold on to it. Lumber people can get real snappy. Hold on to it. I've only been out here five minutes, and I hate this crap. Here's your hard hat. All right. In Oregon, I was preparing to become a real-life lumberjack, so we put on some safety gear, and I got ready to cut us down a tree. And which way do we want this to go? Because I've seen them funny video shows, and well, I don't want to be a part of them video shows. Well, this face cut will kind of dictate where the tree goes, so okay. we're going to try and put it right out that direction. Oh, shoot. Let me get over here. <laughs> How many cars have you landed the tree on? None, yeah. All right. If you, if you can, go that way. It'd be funny for the show. It's a rental. Okay, so this is the piece. It's like cutting watermelon. Well, that's our face cut that we take out of the tree. Okay. And now this slant will kind of dictate the direction that the tree's going to go. Well, I, you know what? I look goofy wearing glasses, so. Well, I'll hang on to them for you if you want. I mean, you're not wearing glasses. Look like a big sissy on national television. <laughs> Now, hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on a second. Now, now about those safety uh, glasses God, here. Dang it, I should have worn them damn glasses. I got something. Are y'all getting my eye at all? <laughs> Yo, I should have worn them glasses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you know, the minute I was getting cocky. <laughs> That's usually God, when an accident happens. coming. Oh, it's starting. This is already lifted. I've always wanted to do this. Timber! I'll be doggone. So that's how we do it. Okay, base cut, back cut, wedge, timber. Here we go, boys. That's it there. Leave it there. Bring your tip around. If you was out here in these woods, cutting these trees down all by yourself, your back would be gone after three trees. Well, we got a long ways to go. How many more we got to do? Oh, we ought to be able to get about 50 or 60 today <laughs> anyway. 50 or 60 trees? Yeah. You enjoy your tree. I got stuff to do. <laughs> did you know this country has more trees on it now than it did in 1920 on the same amount of land? How's that for preserving the forest? <laughs> Take that, Smokey Bear! While Dave's cutting down trees, this fella Hector's hauling huge logs to the mill. Whew. Hopefully this is gonna be a little easier on my back. 
This is what is it? What is this called? And, and uh, what are you doing? The 988 cat loader. And then you're just moving all the, the logs around. Yep. All right, I'll tell you what, I have not seen this much wood since uh, me and my buddies watched Baywatch at hunting camp last year. You got a lot of wood here. Hey, a lot of wood. <laughs> Do you get sick of the wood jokes, the woody jokes? No. Nope. You don't? No, right. I don't. Good, because I got a ton of them. <laughs> hey, can I drive it? Sure. Now, is it, am I going to need some kind of license, or can you just show me and I'll be all right? Oh, I think I can show you. All right, let's do it. Right. Hey, speaking cool. of big logs, y'all got a port potty around here somewhere? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, Jimmy, what am I looking at here? My name's Hector. Well, what'd I call you? Jimmy. That's because you look like a buddy of mine, Jimmy. <laughs> well, let's ride this deal. Kip, hold on, buddy. I'm uh, my cameraman. I feel bad for him. He's got to stand on the side. And then I got my other one, Andy, up here, who's a maniac. Andy, you may not want to stand on the wheel. That might not be the place to be. And now we want to we want to raise this up. Yeah. Now, are we going down or are the logs going up? I can't well, it's tell. so heavy, we feel like we're going down. Feel like we're going down. All, right. All right, that's good. Push huh? that forward. Your lever, lever forward. Okay. There you go. Okay. Easy. I'm easy. Okay. Holy crap. What did I hit? <laughs> I think I ran over one of our vans. Tell you what, Jamie, we're doing good. Or Dave, Hector, <laughs> sorry. Doc, darn it, Hector, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, in the old days, they used to move logs down the mountains with flumes. What that was was a water channel down the mountain. And those flumes inspired what we see in water theme parks today, the log ride. It also inspired anti-nausea pills. Look at that there with that little loader. What do you got, a skirt on there, Hoss? You ought to talk to him on the radio. What you got, a skirt on there, getting them little logs? We in the big machinery over here. That sounds like I'm at the drive-thru. There. So you do this for about nine hours a day, huh? Yeah. And I'm just trying to shake my cameraman. Almost got him. <laughs> I kind of screwed that up, but... So I just moved about eight logs here in an hour. How many logs can you do yourself in an hour? Just depends. More than eight? Morning. 100? Yeah, 100 an hour. So next time you go to wipe your hind end with some three-ply toilet paper, you think of my buddy Hector right here. Because <laughs> if it wasn't for Hector, I mean, we'd still be wiping with pine cones. Some people want to get rid of three-ply toilet paper. They say it's bad for the environment. But I say this, I'm all about protecting the environment. But I'm also about protecting my underbridges from my butt. And uh, that's not coming from me, that's coming from the EPA. Coming up. This is a heavier. There's only one thing better than working. That's taking a break. I was about ready for a break. <laughs> we gotta go. We just sat out here. Lumber sucks. The Rough and Ready Lumber Company in Oregon is an example of what makes America great. Working hard to make high quality wood. After chopping down the trees, hauling them out of the woods, and debarking them, you gotta slice them up with a thing called a head rig. All right, here's what we're doing now. The man in here has the most important part of the whole operation here. Taking these trees like turkeys, you gotta trim the fat off of them, then you gotta decide how many slices you can get out of them. Now, the head rig operator's called the Sawyer. And the one here, his name's Mike. Now he's an expert at getting the most out of every log he cuts. Now I'm gonna see if Mike will let me have a shot at head rigging. Get her done. <laughs> What's going on, brother? So you guys, he's got the job in the whole company, huh? You're trimming the fat off these logs. Yeah, yeah, and if you don't trim the right fat, you end up with bacon. Now how'd you learn how to do this? I've been at sawmill for 44 years. But dad, this is a man's man job right here. You can't be a sissy and do this. <laughs> you can't quit the river dance and come in here and do this, can you? No, no. <laughs> now what, what's the red lasers for? That's a scanner. That scans the log, tells you its dimensions. Now what are the odds, what are the chances that I would get to run one log through here? All you have to do is <laughs> Sit there and listen. Yeah let, yeah, let me run a log to you, see if I can do it. All right. Hope I don't bust nothing up here. Okay, this is going to let her come down. 
Push this forward. Okay. Middle button on that. Okay. That's fast enough? That's plenty fast. Well, knock them back. Whoa! Now what happens if I go too far? You hit the end of the mill. <laughs> that wouldn't be good for business. Okay, now I hit the middle right, button. Hit number one. Grab the center. Yep. Push forward with it. Well, that cuts you there like butter, don't it? Yeah, well. A little far? No, no, you're, you're doing all right. Scaring me, but you're doing all right. <laughs> Third button. <laughs> well, okay. well, I don't know back. how you would remember. I don't know how you remember all this. Just experience. Been I mean, doing that, it most of my life. Now, the head rig is a giant improvement over the old days. Back in the old days, they used to use a big old reciprocating saw that was used by coal power or just manpower. <laughs> I get sweaty just thinking about it. Shoot, I get sweaty just trying to say the word reciprocate. Now the next testosterone filled gig here is working with the gang on the green chain. The best tools for sorting and stacking fresh cut wood are a good set of hands and arms. Now this strapping fella here, Kevin, is an ace at this job. What is this called? Well, we're pulling green chain out here. What is it? Green? Green chain? Green chain. Yeah. Now why is it called the green chain? Wet lumber. And it's heavy. We're pulling this right here. All right. All right? I'll show you how to do lumber. Oh, you got to hold on to it. <laughs> Y'all got anything hard out here or is this, uh... Yeah. Hold on to it. See, you gotta catch it, Larry. I'm on the wrong side. How come you love this job so much? Because I'll tell you, I've only been out here five minutes and I hate this crap. <laughs> What's that mean? That's break time. Now, I may not know how to cut down a tree or stack a bunch of lumber, but I'm gonna tell you what I am good at. Taking a break. I already gave you. Well, yeah, you was. I was about ready for a break. Wait till you get the four by 12. Shoot, four by 12s, I eat them for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> them four by 12s don't mean nothing to me. Only in America can you start a job and five minutes later I already be on a break. <laughs> well, as I look around, there's only one guy in here that's got the proper outfit on. That's my buddy. What's your name? David. That's what you're supposed to wear when you're logging, ain't it? You're gonna go to the bar with us after work? <laughs> I wish I could, but I'm on parole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that ain't funny. I'm on parole. Are you really? That ain't funny. Cover his face, huh? <laughs> we gotta go. Where are you going? Back to work. Back to work. Back to work. You gotta go back to work. Well, shoot, we just sat down here. I'll tell you what, lumber sucks. All right, well, I'll be here in a second. All right. Little do these guys know, my lumber career is up there. I'm headed back to the car. Well, I'll tell you what, I am more wore out than Pam Anderson's mattress. But I'm going to end the day the way I started. I took a tree this morning, and I'm going to plant one to end the day. Tell you what, but if you want to build a good country, you got to have people that are tough enough to want to build it. And there ain't nobody tougher than the folks here at the Rough and Ready Lumber Company in Oregon. Glad nobody got killed. Knock on wood. <laughs> oh man, I gotta go lay down. My back is flipping killing me. Tonight on Only in America. Hey, bus driver, there's no toilet paper back here. I'm hitting a one-of-a-kind American school with a curriculum that'll blow you away. Don't stand next to an open flame after you eat those. I explore the hidden underground world of the San Francisco cable car, amongst other things. 
And later, here's a pair of chaps. The secret lines of Oregon's lumberjack. And then the village people. Macho man. Listen up, America. I'm Larry the Cable Guy, and I love this country. So I had this idea to find out all the things that make this country great. The people, the history, the way we do things. Only in America. What do our American high schools have in common other than teen pregnancy? Hey, what's going on? Hi, Max, what's going on? Well, hi, yeah. welcome. Thank you, good We're to see you. We're kind of busy here cooking lunch. I mean, oh, Sam, Sandy. why don't you um, scrub up and help us a little bit? I know about food. You do? <laughs> I'm going to make Do you some. know about washing? I'm going to find you a nail brush, OK? okay? <laughs> I'm going to go right in the chemical A nail stove. brush? Yes, just hang on. What am I? You know, I didn't just come from a jungle or something. Here's a nail brush. All right. Okay? You just scrub, and while you're scrubbing... Oh, that's the thing. Oh, God, conserve water. But then you put your hands in there, you can't get the water out of it. I know. What happened to the days where you just turn the knob? Oh, well... It's a free country. You should be able to have water when you need water, not when it tells you you need water. There's aprons over there. I'll do the whole deal. Okay. Can you... You don't mind doing me, Dave? Tying my thing? No, come on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to. Look at this. Look. look. So now, if you're interested, please see Mr. Gooch in room 2155. I'll tell you what, I sure like that Gooch fella. He's a really good dude. He is a good dude. I'm all yes. about the Gooch. <laughs> you know, with hunting season in full swing, please be sure you follow school policy. Clean your vehicle before coming to school and leave weapons, ammunition, and knives of any style at home. You know, Jade, when I hunt, I like to wear all orange and hunt right on the side of the highway. That way, the critters think you're just a prisoner picking up trash. They're not scared of you. That's a great, great plan. I don't know if it's legal. Well, but... you bag a lot of them. <laughs> I bet you do, Larry. <laughs> Those are your headlines, though, this morning, VHS. Hey, what we're going to do is see you again tomorrow. Get her done! <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Boy, I tell you what, she's a good one. Now, a lot of folks will tell you their favorite subjects in school was history or English. Now, for me, it was lunch. Why? Because of another great American tradition, the lunch lady. See? Well, I'll tell you. America's a great country because we produce great leaders, like me. All right, bad example. But America is a great country because we do have great schools. And a lot of our good kids come out of these schools. So I'm in Bemidji, Minnesota, where they got a high school that not only has a lot in common with the rest of the country, but they have something that separates itself from anybody else. I'm gonna go check out what it is. And maybe while I'm at it, I can get one of the young'uns to explain neck tattoos and nose piercings. Here comes the school bus! Whether you are seven or 70, some things about American high schools never seem to change. The lunch lady, spitballs, and cheating off that smart kid in math class. Hey, bus driver, there's no toilet paper back here. Thomas Jefferson was the first to suggest creating a public school system. But it wasn't until 1918 that all states actually passed laws that made some sort of school a requirement. America's been educating minds ever since. Well, here we are at the school. I'm a little nervous. I ain't been in school in, geez, five years. <laughs> now, like most schools, Bemidji has morning PA announcements, but boy, it sure ain't like it was when I was a kid. Good morning, Bemidji High School. I'm Jade. And I'm Denzel Washington. Get her done! Thanks for joining us uh, for BHS this morning. Jade? Well, um... Oh, this is mine, Jade. Yep. Community Education is offering us an ACT prep class later this month. Boy, that's gonna be something. Mm -hmm. Stop by the Career Center for more information. Jade? Yeah, they do a really great job. Boy, Definitely they do. There's something else, them folks. And you know, the uh, ASVAB will be offered on Tuesday, November now, what 23rd. is the ASVAB? You know, I'm not really sure. Really? I believe it's a, a test. It will be offered November 23rd, so stop by the Career Center to pre-register. That's right. Mm -hmm. Project Lead the Way is a class that consists of fun, hands-on activities. The class will meet Thursdays after school.